to die. Last week on Sailing Ruby Rose, we were port bound in the Spanish resort town of Almerima, which gave us an excellent opportunity to catch up on boat chores, do some fixes, and we also met up with Paul and Cheryl from Distant Shores. Good morning from the deck of Ruby Rose. It is Monday morning. Monday morning, and we have a very rare occurrence for us. I don't think such a thing has occurred or has been seen since we left it in the Azores. We have clouds, we have a cloudy day. So we have a cloudy day today, which is kind of cool because yesterday was crazy, crazy hot and humid. It was unbearable on the boat. It got to the point where if you did anything but kind of like lay perfectly still, you just broke out into kind of like rivers of sweat. It was particularly uncomfortable and sticky yesterday. Anyway, the, the weather broke last night and we had kind of a deluge, which Teresa slept through and for once I woke up only because uh, the rain must be coming sideways because it got underneath the bimini and through our cabin windows. Anyways, so um, just to recap on a few things, it's probably unlikely that I'm going to have much to show you today and I hope that is the case. We want uh, a very pleasant and uneventful day. We're sailing up the coast. We're heading east to get to uh, Valencia in Spain uh, and that is where we're going to winter. We're just port hopping, port hopping up the coast and this is the Costa Blanca and the Costa Brava and these areas so far they're quite built up, quite touristy, not the sort of thing we would normally go for. We've just come from Almerimar, which is our boat chores video, we'll put a link in up there. It was kind of a bit faceless, not a lot to see, but we met some really lovely people. We caught up with Paul and Cheryl and that was really worthwhile to get two of their boat. And, and now we're heading up, as I said, towards uh, Cartagena, which should be hopefully tomorrow night's at, uh, stop. That is meant to be beautiful and historic and we're looking forward to that tonight. We hope we hope to be able to just get to an anchorage, put the hook down and just go for a swim. Now remember, a knife the head. That's what everyone has told us. Am I required to do anything? Uh, Apart from document the... Uh, Shit show this is gonna be. Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> Three fish fabric. Would you f***ing believe it, eh? No. Now what? Now uh, I've got to get these off without killing myself. As always, ill prepared. <laughs> well, we don't actually expect to catch any fish. Shut up, you're my dinner. Well, my love, we heard this from people on YouTube that we were, we were caught at our fish. Yeah. So, one inch. That's dead. Sorry, my friend. Alright. I feel like that was fairly, uh, Quick and humane. Oh, they're so fucking. I'm hoping that's death throat, so I've stabbed them all in the brain. So just to address the other naysayers on YouTube, this is a filleting knife and it is razor sharp. Yeah, I don't know if you should fill them. Why? Because we ought to put them whole and then we get more fish. Put that down. These are mackerels. More fish. Wow. Three more mackerel, just like last time. Hey, mother, what are we going to do this? You want to fill it in or you want them to grill? I think that you've already filled it too, so yeah, we should fill it then. But I want you to take time filling them because um, when you do it quickly, you leave too much meat on. I'm making a shit show of what you did last time. <laughs> <laughs> Everything you do is absolutely fantastic, but I do feel like maybe if you just took it to 10 seconds, then you might end up with a little bit more fish. I'm sure our lovely YouTube audience will share their thoughts regarding your political speech as well. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so I've got, I reckon, hang on a second, can you show me? Yeah. I have 10 fillets. Okay. So hopefully by the time I get to number 10, you would have perfected your technique. I kind of, I know what I meant to do in theory. You find the, you find the spine. Yeah. And you cut along it. What's the problem? I don't know. <laughs> Let's have a look. Yeah, bang on. Yeah, oh, so that's better. There you go. That's a beautiful looking fillet right there, babe. Please, look at that. Hold that up. There you go. Yeah. Alright, fine. So you can do it. Well, I always knew I could do it. I know, but you rush it when the adrenaline is pumping. Fishy adrenaline. Fishy adrenaline. Adrenaline. Right. <laughs> Quite a lot of bones in this, babe. Picking them out. Back when the rain fall, we just want the sun down. Give up when it's too hard. I know you can feel it. It's really not a secret. Watch it as you breathe it. Save your love for me. Save, save your love for me. Save it, save your love. anchor in this absolutely spectacular little bay and there's great protection here at the moment from the swell the winds kind of dropped off almost totally uh, which was not what the forecast said but anyway and uh, yeah there was this swell coming in from the northeast and I thought oh we might have a bit of a rolling night but if the swell remains in the same direction that it is at the moment then um, hopefully we'll be quite comfortable because this is really lovely and protected in here. However, Nick is about to dive on the anchor um, just to double check that it's all set and he has to dive on the prop as well because we have something stuck in our prop. Uh, we noticed some blue rope kind of trailing along behind us and it's um, yeah stuck in our propeller which is a bit of a bummer. So Nick is going to go and sort that out. Nick? Necklace. Oh, here, here he is. He's in the water already. How'd you go? Yep. Yep. Can you get me the wallpaper scraper out of the where bucket? It is. Out of the bucket. Try to explain. You told me all your secrets, then you said it would rain. And now I'm standing here without a clue. Cause I thought I knew every single part of you. How does it hurt? Like tearing up the hole inside.
Another beautiful day sailing the Mediterranean. It's very peaceful and relaxing. We are actually sailing. Unbelievable. Code zero is out, mains up. We've got about six and a half knots of wind speed and we're doing about four and a half knots. Absolutely beautiful. That was one rolly ass anchorage. I don't think any of us slept more than about 20 minutes. That's got to come in at number three on the worst anchorages we've ever slept in. Number one is Le Palais, uh, outside Belle Isle in France. Number two, St. Bart's. That's number three. Anyway, so we're up, and I just said to Teresa, look, just help me get the anchor up, babe, and we're just going to get, you can get back to bed. So we're going to get up, get going, and try and get to. Uh, where are we going? I've forgotten. Uh, Cartagena today. Day three on the water. We spent last night in a very rolly anchorage, um, which was completely exposed to the swell from the south, but then again, all the anchorages around here are. So yeah, we didn't really get much sleep, um, which is a bit of a bummer, but certainly not the first time that we've been in a really rolly anchorage, and not the last, I don't think. We've got our passage to Cartagena today. It's about a 30 mile passage, and Again, we're motoring, we're motor sailing, I guess. I thought, I genuinely thought that we'd be able to get some sailing in over this, like these few hops, but um, alas, not to be. We've not had the weather that was forecasted, so a bit of a bummer. However, another beautiful day on the Mediterranean Sea, so I'm not complaining, even if I am a bit sleep deprived. Over the course of the next hour, something really worrying happened. There was a sudden loud roaring sound coming from somewhere underneath the boat. We couldn't quite place where it was, perhaps the engine, perhaps the propeller. We weren't sure. It was absolutely deafening, like an aeroplane landing, except coming from our boat. Nick was downstairs at the time and my instinct was to jump up and put the engine into neutral, which did stop the noise. So of course, from then we were into diagnostic mode. And after checking the engine, Nick decided to dive underneath the boat, even though we're still underway, and check the propeller. While you're in the water? Uh, yeah, just take a bit of get back. Yeah, very slowly put it into drive for about five seconds. If the, if the noise starts again, stop it. Alright. No, I'm, I'm just trying to go through some problem solving in my head as to what it is. Yeah, it sounds like a kind of crazy loud vibration, doesn't it? And it goes away. It goes away if we put the engine into neutral. So it has to be affected by the engine being in gear. I don't know. I've got it, I mean, like I said, I'm just trying to run through like the entire mechanism in my head. The propeller turns freely, so I don't think it's the prop. Yeah. 
The next thing is the rope cutter. Now that is a suspect because there's two very fine plastic rings between them. Yeah. And one of those was displaced a little bit, which theoretically means that the two, the, the rope cutter is like rotating scissors. Yeah. The two jaws could be clashing because the plastic things disappeared. But it sounds so loud. Could that make a noise that well, loud? Well, because it would jam, it would jam the propeller and stop it from moving. Alright. The next is a problem with the prop shaft. Yeah. Where the prop is, you know, but there's water coming through, the stuffing box is producing water. I'm just, I'm just at a loss. It sounds to me like there's some gearing. It sounds like a gear clash. And that's not something you can see? You can't see that? Well, you'd be able to see something that was seized, but if it's inside a gearbox, you can't see it. It may be the gearbox, it may be the engine, but the engine runs smoothly in neutral. And it's running smoothly right now, so it's something that happens only intermittently. There are no touch wood. There are no alarms on the engine. So the four engine alarms you've got are overheat, oil, uh, batch, uh, water, raw water intake. Is there something else you can look up when we get in? No. Is, no, so you've done all your... I've done as much as I can. I think we will limp in at this at slow speed, we'll try and get in, and then... Uh, I, I, I really, I'm just at a loss, Therese. I'm just at a loss as to what I can do. My thoughts are that really, you know, we get ourselves into marina, then reassess yeah, well, as to what we need to do. Yeah. Um, but there's nothing else you can look at. No, no, there's nothing else I can look at. There's the problem. Thoughts on problems like this is that they tend to not just be single point events. There's something wrong. There's something wrong with the drive mechanism. Mm. As I said, you know, the entire thing is engine, engine, gearbox, gearbox, prop shaft, prop shaft, propeller. To me, it sounds like it's the prop or something around the prop. Well, the engine is at the bottom of the companionway, isn't it? Yeah. It doesn't sound like it's coming from the engine. And there's a squeak. There's a kind of a whistling coming from the under, from the. I can hear it from okay. the prop. Right. Yachtport Cartagena, Yachtport Cartagena. This is Yacht Ruby Road, it's over. So, for those of you who are wondering what I'm doing at the moment, rather than just sitting here looking lazy, when it comes to the last half a mile, half a kilometre before we get into a marina, the first thing I'm looking at, apart from the, what I need to see to kind of you know, get my location, make sure we're getting into the right place and not going around, it's the direction of the wind, because we need to moor this boat up and the wind is always going to push us in a certain direction. Close, close quarter boat handling, especially when you've got like a high sided boat, you need to really understand where the wind is. And the last time we did this and stuffed it up, which was back in Cadiz, it was just we were tired and I just didn't think about where's the wind coming from. So just a tip for those of you who have, you know, are doing this and you're relatively new to it, just always look to the direction of the wind and monitor it for a few minutes because when you've got buildings around, the wind flukes around. So we've already radioed ahead and what I'm going to try and do is we're going to hopefully find some marinero that will take us to our berth straight away. But um, understanding which way the wind is pushing us is going to be uh, instrumental in getting a, a non bollocks up water. I just thought I'd tell you that, you know? just why I'm sat here, just doing my thing. Oh, no way! <laughs> Hello! <laughs> oh, 
Tracer, this is me. Shotgun. Oh, sweet. Yeah. 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 It's all right, it's all right. Have you the one that's driven in today? Join us next week here on Sailing Ruby Bros as Nick diagnoses our engine problem, which leaves us free to explore the beautiful and very historic city of Cartagena. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. If you like what we do and you want to see what we do every week, then please hit that subscribe button. Cheers, bye.